When Sage first started, when it was in its, I would call it the Cuba stage, it was over email on this newfangled thing called the internet. And it was, a, I think it was about 32 people that were emailing back, back and forth with each other, providing each other resources, encouragement, job opportunities. And this was back in the mid-90s. I was stationed at Los Angeles Air Force Base in California. I was a junior officer, uh, only a couple years out of the U.S. Air Force Academy. And I thought this was a really cool thing to be a part of. And to see what it has grown into is simply amazing. To see, it's inspiring. To see what the thought of a few people can become. To have that vision, not to see things as they are right now, but to see things as they can be. It was originally an organization that was started for federal government employees with the mission in the Constitution and bylaws to increase American Indian and Alaskan Natives in government. Uh, it, after a few years of, of being uh, in business as an organization, uh, we realized that we needed to expand that and we needed to represent all American Indian and Alaskan Native government employees, uh, whether it was at the federal level or the tribal level or state level or community level that by having American Indians and Alaska Natives in government meant having a better government. Far back as I can remember, that I started learning about the National Park System. I started learning about the 1916 Organic Act from people like Black Hawk, from people like Crow's Ghost, from people like Yellow Wolf, and from my grandmas and my, grand and my grandfathers. Not once, however, did they mention the word 1916. Not once did they mention the Organic Act. But what they talked about was the same philosophy. They talked about philosophy as far as keeping that ground and that spirituality of the sacred earth or sacred geography for the future generations. They talked about how we need to understand who we were as Indian people. And especially in my generation, we started learning the opportunities that we need to know to live in both worlds. I was hired as a young enforcement attorney at the EPA, thinking I was going to work on environmental, important environmental issues, but then they approached me to become a diversity person because I was the only American Indian in the office of 1500. And I quickly learned that because I was the only Indian person in there, that when I was writing rules and writing policies, that I was the only one thinking about whether we could include tribes or not. And of course we could, but I was the one, the low level staff person, having to try and convince the senior managers that we could in fact delegate these programs and write rules to include tribes. If there were more American Indians in the federal government, there would be more of us there to make sure that tribes are appropriately included. One of the organizations within our organization uh, that is being developed and, and, and will soon be able to open up for, for membership is a warrior society. Uh, which will be able to help us with our veterans track, which is part of our annual training program, and help develop that veterans track so that when we bring veterans into our training program, it's, it's relevant and being run by, by veterans. Not knowing if you're going to make it to your destination, not knowing if you're going to make it back home, seeing the sights that you're not supposed to see, that you have to deal with. So, like I say, it's, it's, it's hard for combat to sit there and talk about it. And we want to show our appreciation to veterans. Many times you don't get any recognition back home. Many times people don't even know you serve your country. Whatever story you have, you keep it to yourself. Because only the good Lord knows your, your, your MOS. Singers, whenever I have to know, admit, this is the best, the most phenomenal conference I have been to in most of my federal government years. It is unique, a very educational, very professional. There is absolutely no fluff to the conference. I'm impressed. You're in, the interns that are member of SAGE are just mind blowing. At, at our very first training conference in Fort Lauderdale in 2004, uh, the chair at the time was Cheryl Zwang. 
and her daughter was attending the conference with us as a recent high school graduate going off to college and made the point at the conference that if the mission of SAGE is to increase American Indian and Alaska Natives in government, you need to get youth involved. You need to let youth know of the opportunities and careers in government, and you need to have them involved in your organization and in your training programs. You guys are gonna take a message back to your tribe. We're gonna sit and we're gonna share what we believe as young people is affecting our community in a negative way, whether it be drinking, drugs, alcohol, bullying, gangs, uh, violence, whatever it is, uh, we are going to go back and we're going to share. Everybody's going to share their opinion in your tribe. You're going to kick it off. You're going to share what you feel is affecting your personal community. The thing that's affecting our village is, well, is everyone's drinking a lot and our ways are going away and no one's like fighting to keep it going and we barely have any elders left so it's kind of like tough. I uh, know almost all the Indian nations have casinos and we all have council. I believe both of those take from the people and I believe those two should come together and build a foundation for the education, put it in the schools, put it in the high schools and that's where we become educated and that's where we will have an identity because I believe education will get us where we need to go. A lot of the youth are committing suicide in alarming numbers because they don't have an idea of what it is to be Native. And it's one of the most alarming things. It truly is. Because when we lose the youth, we lose what is necessary to keep our heritage going. Just had an epiphany. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually talking about, um, I'm sure what everyone's talking about, alcoholism, drugs, suicide all these um, different things, and I'm sure everybody has the same thing down, but I was just thinking about why is this happening, where could we go, and I went back down, and uh, it just said, said something, without tradition you lack respect, so it comes down to respect, where do you get this respect, and it, and it comes from tradition. Students that are picked are not necessarily uh, the student that would be picked for another scholarship, because I try to pick those students that would give them an, a new opportunity. A lot of the students have never even been on an airplane before and um, who would come from rural areas. And those are the students that I like to, to bring, give them opportunity that they would normally not have. People are coming here to recruit you to work for them. And that's a tremendous opportunity. They have a scholarship and everything is paid for, but their main focus is to, is to attend the, the sessions at SAGE. So, you know, that's what I try to encourage with them, and to mingle with people and to, to learn what other agencies are offering. And, and I think if you listen to the students from last year, that's what they'll say, well, I came here and I was, uh, I just graduated and I was looking for, a, and they actually found jobs here, you know, at SAGE last year. So it's really, I think it's a good opportunity for the students to learn what the federal government has to offer them. Ultimately, SAGE also assist federal agencies in meeting four executive orders. The executive order on tribal consultation, because we provide the tribal training, tribal colleges, because we support the youth and we bring them from the tribal colleges and give them the training they need so that they can fill that pipeline to the entry level positions, executive order on diversity, and the executive order on students and recent grads. The SAGE conference is is something that is special that that many people look forward to the whole year long because it's a training event where they wake up in the morning and when the sun rises there's already activities happening to after the sun sets there's cultural activities that are happening uh, they're receiving opportunities to listen to to top-notch speakers around the country speaking about issues for government employees and about issues with indian and, and alaska native government employees uh, and they're busy all day long, but we also have opportunities where they can network. And uh, although there's there's many people that attend the SAGE conference, uh, probably one of the, the favorite things is you get a chance to meet old friends and also meet new friends. So we're in Spokane next year, is that right? Oh, that's going to be nice.
going to do one for, uh, for Danny. Uh, most people that attend a, a SAGE conference will not do it just one year. They normally try to come back year after year because there's so many experiences and so many things they learn, but they also feel like they're part of a family, uh, but not just an organization, but part of a group where they're welcome and, uh, and feel like they're amongst friends. To learn more about SAGE and its training programs, go to www.sage.org and join the Native Network.